Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 17. Ever You notice the that, that's, coincidental, that's six. how it kind of fits with the guests that we had on before, the 17 17th. thing? Yeah. We planned that. Of course. No, we didn't. Anyway, Tech Talk number 17, <laughs> we got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight uh, with some cool travel speakers. Uh, yeah, baby. USB stuff. What else we got? Um, We're going to talk about what we might hear about from Apple tomorrow a little bit. Just oh, cool. A bit, not a whole lot. Um, how to get a really, really cheap one terabyte uh, solid state drive. For All your, sorts of cool for stuff. your Mac or PC. Yeah. And we're going to discuss those little noises that you either hear or don't hear and how to get rid of them. Ah! All right. Sweet. And your questions. Get them in the chat room right now so we can answer them here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Hi. Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech, tech talk, talk, talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Talk. <laughs> Number 17. Um, a fascinating week here at the VoiceOver Body Shop. All sorts of cool things going on. People having problems with their studios. You know, how do I route this? How do I do that? We get lots of interesting questions from people in our professional practices as home studio engineers and consultants. Yes, it and inspires the show sometimes. It, it does. Yeah. We could talk I for hours on it. Yeah, I mean, and that's generally what we do is when you and I get together. It's like, yeah, here's one I heard today. Yeah. And, oh, did you see that discussion on did Facebook? That thing in the groups? Oh, my God. Yeah, geez, yeah. what are people thinking? <laughs> But anyway, we'd love your questions. Uh, if you've got a question about home voiceover studio technology, uh, throw it in the chat room right now, and we will get to that question in just a little bit and uh, yep. and answer it to the best of our knowledge. The, the, the best Facebook, of our ability. Uh, the Facebook chat is what's firing tonight. Yeah. YouTube just decided to ice us tonight. We have no idea why, but we are on Facebook Live. Yes, which is where a lot of people Having watch a us. Backup anyway. is a darn good idea. Oh, well, Don't have everything in one basket. Always have a show. backup, kids. Yeah. All righty. So what's up with your tech update this week? Oh, man. There's, you know, as usual, it's a grab bag of stuff. Um, a couple of show and telly things. Okay. Um, I'm a, I used to be a headphone junkie, but now I feel like I do have enough different headphones, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the headphones I have. So I'm not buying as many of those now. I'm buying a little bit more Bluetooth speakers these days. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> maybe a year or so ago, I did actually bring one on. Two, maybe two years ago, it was a little cylinder, cylindrical one. I liked right. it because it was not expensive, sounded reasonably good. Well, I had it. I do dumb things. I had it strapped onto the back of my bike. Went on a bike ride. Went down a very dirt, bumpy road, and it fell off at some point. It's gone. 
Some um, rattlesnake who's playing with it. Yeah, that's why I don't buy two hundred dollar use uh, <laughs> Bluetooth speakers. I buy the forty dollar ones from Amazon. Um, but so it was time to time to get a new US uh, uh, Bluetooth speaker. And it's cool when you find something that has multiple functions and has com- some interesting tricks. And I did find something, and the brand, the brand, all these things from China. The the branding. I don't know how they come up with names. I don't know if they have this thing where they throw in letters and it spits out random things <laughs> and they all try saying it and go, that sounds A good. name generator. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the Zamkol, Z-A-M-K-O-L speakers. The, the model is the ZK206. Um, these are kind of cool because they are, uh, they have a lot of functions. So one of them is that they're just USB. No, I mean, they're just Bluetooth speakers, obviously. Um, but the tricks they have up their sleeve are numerous and the ones that matter the most to me- to us, I'll focus on. I mean, they are waterproof. That's almost a given very important nowadays. with voiceover IP seven or IPX or whatever they say, you can drop these in water, literally. Um, they, uh, but what's cool about them is they, they, it's a stereo Bluetooth speaker that comes apart. So it has this little strap. You can take that off and now this thing separates into two speakers it literally wow. is two, two us two bluetooth i keep saying usb it's two bluetooth <laughs> speakers they can be used independently you could have one and give it to one kid and give another one to the other kid good idea you could give one to your girlfriend and keep one and then when you see each other honey we can do stereo uh we can get together yes <laughs> there's all kinds of fun but the sound quality is really surprisingly decent i mean they have really figured out how to make a good sounding and affordable uh bluetooth speaker right now i mean it's really really impressed i mean I, I can play something now it doesn't really do any justice whatsoever to play something on well let's just play something good well i can't guarantee i could do that because <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll we'll get flagged for playing it but i do have this uh library of music uh what's this one on that let's try this one interesting mix anyway there's no way you can tell but the the, the woofers on this thing are shaking i can feel the thing physically moving it's it's really quite amazing and okay so what's the big deal these out their sound quality i in my opinion is good enough that with voiceover that you could bring these as your one speaker for travel and just have them in your bag when you get to your hotel room, put them on your desk, and you can edit to these speakers and get reasonably good reproduction. Right. You're not going to expect amazing things in a hotel room, but their sound quality is good enough that you could definitely edit with these. You know, um, They have really good, very p- compliant little rubber feet, so they won't transmit mm. too much vibration to right. the counter. Um, and when you want to plug them into a computer, you don't have to use uh, Bluetooth. It has an they auxiliary. Have a, they have plug. an auxiliary plug, and it's cool. a Y cable, right? So one Ooh. goes to one speaker, one goes to the other, and one goes to your device. And then it also has a uh, corresponding charger that is also a Y cable, so you can charge both at the same time. Wow. Anyway, these things are currently like sixty-five to seventy dollars on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I saw some YouTuber say that when he bought them, they were forty dollars. Amazon prices are crazy they go up and down like the stock market it's, there's something called honey have you heard of, have you heard of honey you can install a utility on your web browser and it monitors stuff you're looking at wow. and honey will say hey by the way amazon just discounted that thing 20 bucks go snag it who comes up with this stuff amazon <laughs> plays with prices like I've, it's it's incredible what they do with prices yeah anyway those are cool um, another thing is, um, I'm looking to upgrade the, the Ram or not the Ram, but the storage in my MacBook air and love Apple products, hate how they do. They prior proprietize is that a word. Yes. Um, certain things in their computers. So yes, you can go into a MacBook air and really easily upgrade the, the storage, the SSD. Yeah. Not, of, not the Ram. Bunch of screws, not the Ram. <laughs> But a bunch of screws, bottom pops off. Same with this MacBook Pro you have, same deal. Bunch of screws on the bottom, get a pentalobe screwdriver. Do not even think about using any standard screwdriver. 
and pop it off and you'll see that there is an SSD inside. And that SSD will look something like this. It looks like a RAM chip. It looks like a RAM chip. And in this case, this is one I bought to put into my MacBook Air. This is one terabyte. Wow. Not 100 gigabytes. One terabyte of storage, 1,000 gigabytes on this little card. And these are very, you know, commonly available. The thing is that this is a very fast drive. So it, it this is going to be as fast or faster of what's in there. It's the, not mechanical. There. It's just right. And random it access. is, um, so this, this is a, this is an M.2 SATA SSD. So we're getting a little geeky, but these are things you look for when you look at something that's fast. But then you can buy a little, this, the thing it's sitting in is a little USB adapter, which lives uh, inside this metal sleeve. I kept it all un, unscrewed and so you could see what it looks like. But you can buy this little card with the USB cable and the thing for 20 bucks. And now for roughly 100 to 110 bucks, you have a one terabyte USB 3.1 SBC drive, which that means you have a really fast drive that you can do anything externally now. That you would have normally had to do internally and it will run beautifully and you, you wouldn't edit. and you don't have to carry the external drive like it's an egg yeah you can edit 4k <laughs> video direct to this thing it is stinking fast and I've, I've showed you guys the little um one made by a sand disc that i like a right. lot this is half the price of that for the amount of storage again one terabyte for about 100 bucks wow. the next stage for me is to put this in my macbook <laughs> and again that, that that proprietary thing i was talking about the is, pin, is, there, is there a place to, sli to, to slide it in? Yes, this, this will come out of this, and you can put it inside the MacBook. Wow. But the little pins, the, the connector here, on a Mac, they've rewired it, so it's different. Guess what? You can buy a $10 adapter. Of course. That will convert On Amazon, into, probably. <laughs> yeah, and now this card, that would this would be like a three to $400 drive for a Mac, is 100 bucks. Wow. I'm in the middle of the process of trying to make that work. It's not exactly plug and play, as I have found out. I have the operating system on there, but when I boot the computer on, it gives me a little flashing folder, which basically in Mac world means you ain't got no hard drive, man. You're not booting up. So I got a little more work to do. I'll let you guys know if I get, if I figure out the secret sauce to make this work. But anyway, that is the one thing from Apple that uh, I don't want to spend full price for, for their SSDs. They're crazy, crazy expensive. Absolutely. Um, another thing is, uh, this is not really directly related, but it comes up so much that people have been talking about it. 5G. Right. Um, if you have an AT&T phone, you may have already seen 5G show up on the very top, you know, the little LTE symbol. You may have seen something that says 5G E on your, eye, on your existing iPhone or whatever it is from AT&T. So 5G is this next generation of mobile data. We're all mostly using 4G at this point or LTE um, or some flavor of that. What 5G is, is it's the next generation of this, and it's got some major pros and cons, and they're very much at, at, at odds to each other. So very quickly, pros, super duper duper fast. Um, uh, there's this blogger named MKBHD, or is that how you say his name? I may have blocked. Did I, is that the right way to say it? I'm being checked on that. Okay, good. Yeah, he's a very well-known YouTuber, and he, he's, he went up to Connecticut, found a neighborhood where there's 5G, bought a 5G capable phone, and there's not many, and tested it. And on the street, walking around, he got 1.6 gigabits a second on a mobile phone. So speed, not a problem. Not a problem, yeah. The problem is all this technology comes at a major cost. One of them is its line of sight. So he would walk down the street, and he would turn the corner around the building, and the speed would plummet to like a less than 100 megasecond, like immediately. Yeah. So think about how many antennas You'd have to have. You'd have to know where they tent. are. Okay, there's right? one over there. So there's got to be a ton of antennas. That's right. one problem. Two, because of that, uh, because it is very fast, it also requires quite a bit of power. So it drains your battery way faster. So you're going to need a much bigger battery, which we don't have quite yet. That's two. And three, and this, this is controversial, but this is the thing that has people concerned, is how about all the radiation I was going to say the RF the is RF being thrown being out there blasted out. into our brains and ears That's and the kidneys. We're waiting to see if it really is an issue, but it's enough of an issue that there are some communities that are already like protesting against it. Topanga, where I happen to live, is one of those. There's, there's little town hall meetings about 
No 5G. Well, it's kind of <laughs> silly in Topanga. There's literally entire sound sections of town that don't have cell phone coverage, period. So well, the whole idea, you're, we, you're don't, want ditch. Fi- we mean, don't want on. 5G. Like, well, dude, you don't even have any, you don't have any coverage at all. Right. It's pretty funny. So anyway, don't worry about 5G for a long time. It's going to be something that's going to be used for professional, professional use. But for consumer grade, it's completely overpriced, very hard to find. The phones are much, much more expensive. It's bleeding, bleeding edge stuff right now. So if you do see 5G eShow up on your AT&T phone, that's simply AT&T getting away with something. It's branding. It's BS. It doesn't actually mean anything. You it's heard it here. Same, same dang thing you already had. It's just them pulling a fast one. They did it with 4G too. They had 4GE. So it's, it's not true. Anyway, that's my little rant about 5G. Don't worry about it quite yet. Check in with us in about a year or two. I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't either. I mean, my, I'm, I'm happy with mine for the most part uh, in terms of speed. Yeah. I'm, I can do a YouTube video, edit it on my phone of a mountain bike ride, which I do almost every week, and upload it if I want to blow my data plan, but, and upload it while I'm out and about, a 600 meg video, and it's up and ready to go. Yeah. I, LTE. I switched carriers a little while ago and, you know, perhaps the coverage isn't great in certain areas, Yeah, but the speed is there. Yeah. If, I, if I've got LTE and it's like, okay, I, I, what do I need? I just, you know, I've yeah. got the GPS has to work. It's very coverage dependent and it depends a lot on where you live. I, I went from Verizon to Google Fi. Yeah. Uh, pros and cons on that one. But um, Google Fi combines T-Mobile and Sprint, uh, which... Is it can be good? Yeah, it can be good. But uh, but for voiceover and sending files, what you're you sending got is, MP3s. Come on, now. yeah. What you got is probably fine. I use mine in Hotspot a lot too. Hotspot yeah. mode. Yeah, huge. Li- I really love that. Yeah. Big lifesaver. We we once ran this show completely from a hotspot. Oh, we've done that more than once. <laughs> in fact, I think it was View Atlanta yeah. number two or one. Or remember when we were brought in to, to do the live stream? Yes. The early days, and we live streamed the entire opening event on a mobile phone. I think it was Dan's mobile phone. The bill was pretty horrendous, but well, no, I had unlimited. I didn't. Oh, you had unlimited at the time. That's right. It didn't matter. (laughs) It was pretty amazing. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is something I think a lot of people who are you know who have a home studio, and the operative word there word there is home, right? Because a home is not the ideal place to record. Unless, of course, you generally set it up not. properly. Yeah, generally. It's impossible to soundproof Not by your default. <laughs> no, no. It's impossible to soundproof your home. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes money, knowledge, time, a good contractor, uh, and the right materials to do that. And you've got to know how to do it, and it's got to be done right. So it's not necessary because there are other ways to make sure you don't get those external noises. Mm-hmm. One is... You live where you choose to live. You know? Choose wisely on your yeah, location. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't live underneath the, the flight path at LAX or at Bob Hope or one of the, you know, yeah. one of the other, you know, LaGuardia. Heck, you can't hear anything there in Queens because LaGuardia, it's in and out. Yeah. Um, airplanes are a problem. Helicopters are a problem, especially here in Los Angeles. It's constant. You can feel the capitation. Mm-hmm. What I want to talk about are some of those other little noises that come from inside the house oh those little ones those insidious sounds what yes is that sound what is that, that sound? sound and and the way people describe them of course is always really weird but you know is it a hiss is it a buzz is it a hum is it a this it's like well one person's hiss is another person's hum or buzz <laughs> or buzz yeah or a click or yeah. whatever um a lot of times and and you, you we will look at it and when you can look at a waveform and you see that it is a a constant pattern that indicates that it is something mechanical. Yeah. Usually it's an air conditioner. I have gone through apartment buildings going, where is that? Where is this air conditioner? We've gone down to apartments below. I said, Mm -hmm. could you turn off your ceiling fan? You'll do it. And I'm like, no, it's still there. Apartments are tough, man. That whole gigantic building is humming and resonating with With all sorts of all the machinery that's in the building. Right. They're tough. Yeah. So trying to find that and trying to to, to smell it out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, turn your thermostat off when you're doing that. Just remember to turn it back on when you're finished recording. Uh, Refrigerator. Refrigerator. That's (laughs) the one I wanted to really bring up. Now, I've. My studio used to be in my 
for those of you in the Northeast, my basement. A basement? I was right underneath the kitchen, mm -hmm. and I could hear the refrigerator. And I'm like, what is that? Uh, oh, I'm right below the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I did is I found some anti-vibration foam, mounted it on the floor, put some very thin wood strips over it, rolled the refrigerator back on top of it, got rid of it. How did you distort? How did, what? How any vibration foam? Like, where do you find that? Is that online? Look for anti vibration foam. Does that come from a soundproofing? Yeah, website the, yeah, or? there's a, yeah, they've got there's a couple of different websites, mm -hmm. but if you you Google it or anti vibration ask, pads or foam, right, and it comes feet. in different thicknesses and yeah. stuff. I found found this thin stuff, and I still have a little bit of it left. I yeah. was working on somebody's studio the other day. We mm -hmm. were building it, and this person was freaking out because they had just moved into this apartment. And apparently the refrigerator had not been turned on when she was first looking at it. Sure, sure. So when she's moving in and I'm setting up the studio, it's like the, I, the refrigerator was making this noise. Yeah. Now, having lots of experience with refrigerators, I'm like, okay, let's pull the refrigerator out. Uh-huh. And I would have just unplugged it and been done with well, it. I, well, I was going to say, well, unplug your refrigerator yeah, and plug it back that's in. Not but yeah, practical. That's yeah. not, not the best solution. Not a smart idea. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed that the backing of the refrigerator had come loose right around where the compressor was. Down near the bottom. Down somewhere. near the bottom. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not the fan. I'll, I'm betting the compressor is loose or something. Mm -hmm. And I look in there and I touch one of the pipes that's in there. Yeah. And this high pitched frequency stopped. I took my finger off. I hear it again. Touch it. <sighs> Had some of that anti-vibration foam that I bought for my refrigerator back in Buffalo seven or eight years ago <laughs> in the trunk of my car. Yeah. Put it inside some Wait, of those tubes. Yeah. Guys, nice. don't worry about your refrigerator. That's I went back trick. in the studio, couldn't hear it. That's a good trick. So you I should try that in my girlfriend's place. <laughs> my philosophy is always don't use technology to fight these noises. That's a last resort. It really is. You want to do everything you can physically yeah to eliminate noise you try to f isolate yourself in a closet uh find a quiet room that's you know not near a window those sorts of things but there are noises in the house find them be sherlock holmes and look around and find out where that noise is coming from and also remember that your microphone doesn't have a brain mm -hmm. our brains take some of these noises and filter them out if you're lucky yeah, well, unless Some it's really annoying. That like, that. this refrigerator was really annoying. Yeah, yeah. Like, that would have driven me nuts after yeah, a while. Yeah. Uh, but your brain tunes it out as a monotonous tone. Yeah. And you don't hear it. But your microphone does. Right. And if your microphone does, so does your hard drive. Mm -hmm. And so does the engineer at the other end of mm -hmm. whatever it is that you've sent them. And that can be an issue. Yeah, it makes it all the way to the other end. So if you have an issue with a sound... Describe if you're sending it in to one of us to like, what's this noise? Or I'm in somebody's house or their apartment or something. I will look around and I will find that noise and I will find a way to get rid of the noise itself. Not go, well, what sort of sound thing? All these people are looking at all of these different sound and noise reduction programs. Yeah. Which can degrade your audio significantly they if you can. don't know how, how you work them. Yeah. So it's really, really important to find the source. Better to stop the cause as opposed to treating the symptoms, mm -hmm. as any good doctor will tell you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Thank hey, you. if you've got questions for us, throw them in the chat room right now. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and we'll get to those questions and continue the discussion here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 17 right now. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing, and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. 
Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine. And this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application, doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really want to be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. Absolutely important. Go get a 15 day free trial at Source dash elements.com 15 day free trial you don't need an iLock little usb dongly thing to get set up with source connect standard right away so go give it a try and tell them we sent you we'll be right back right after this hey it's time to talk about our good friend harlan hogan and voice over essentials and tonight voice over essentials announces a promo code to get a discount on their porta booths like this one here now what with material labor and shipping cost increases, not to mention tariffs and the straw that broke the camel's back, a big hike in storage cost. They had to raise prices on the booths by eh, just a little bit, just $10 on the Porta Booth Plus and $20 on the Porta Booth Pro. But our wonderful VOBS viewers can still get either of their booths for their original price for the next two weeks. You should go to, of course, voiceoveressentials.com. Easy to get there at the bottom of our page. Just click the picture of Harlan there and put either of their booths in their shopping cart and enter the promo code booths24 in the promo code field and click the submit promo code button. That'll get you $10 off the plus and $20 off for the pro. Get a Porta booth now at the original price at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks a lot, Harlan. Before time began, there was... B-O-B-S dot TV. Watch or else. Well, like, like it or not, we're back. <laughs> After a, another rousing discussion on tech stuff. Yep. But we've got questions from our vast audience out there. They've been yeah. sending them in. And if Which you we love, yeah, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room right now. And uh, and during the week, if you have a problem or a question or something like that, email us at the guys at VOBS TV and we will answer that question yeah. because we'll have time to actually research it if we need to. That's yeah. right. And our first question comes from our very good friend out in the desert there, Jack Degoli. And Jack says, Jack. Uh, Thomas Thierry, I think that's how you say his name right, the developer of Twisted Wave, by the way, um, sent me an interesting reply to a glitch problem that I reported to him that I had with a big 28 hours finished hour oh boy. Uh, audiobook project. Um, he's using a Studio Project C1, it's a good moderately priced mic, a Focusrite Scarlet Solo, generally a good piece of gear. He didn't say whether it's the Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 3 version. There are three versions. Um, a MacBook Air running Mojave, which looks like the latest version. Uh, he had Twisted Waves buffer set to 1024 uh, milliseconds. I think that's what that's measured in. Basically, he had that set conservatively. It should, yeah. should be okay. Um, I shut the computer down each night. So what he's basically saying, I'm doing everything right, everybody. Um, have you run into this issue with Focusrite? The glitchy sample I sent Thomas is attached. Oh, I missed the attached part. Oh, okay. Um, I've not had this glitch issue since early August. So it's happened before. Yes, it has happened before, apparently. This is not an isolated issue. Um, 
Did this come in by email? Because I'm looking. Yeah, I don't think I he actually find. sent it to us. I think he sent it to uh, to Thomas over at uh, a Twisted Wave. Yeah, I don't think I, I have. It. I did not see it. Um, well, okay. So oftentimes, the most completely hard to explain and randomized glitches, in my experience, almost always related to USB on some level. Um, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. And, and the, the problem is, is that we're asking a lot of this little USB cable. We're asking to do a lot of stuff. It's carrying audio to the computer. It's carrying audio from the computer. And it's powering the device that's doing all this work, all in this one little cable. And um, most of us with Scarlet Solos, all these little inexpensive uh, interfaces, they're bus powered, meaning they're, they don't have a power supply. Power supply is the biggest deal about any piece of gear, especially audio related. How good is the power supply? The gear is only as good as that power supply. If the power supply is compromised, if it's weak, if it's not, if it's dirty, if the cable carrying the signal is not great, any one of these reasons, you get loss of functionality completely, which is actually not as bad because that's like, okay, if it stopped working, great, move on, get something else. But the worst ones are the random problems or the loss of uh, the, the glitchiness, the clickiness, which I don't have the audio, but I can guarantee what he's talking about has some clickiness in, yeah. clickiness in it or some static in it, right? You've heard this probably a lot. Right. It's, it's, yeah. probably, it's dropouts, it's snap, crackle, pop. Oh, and, yeah. And sometimes it's not in the recording. Sometimes it's only when you're playing back. Right. And the way you can tell which is, is, is a recording or playback is... When you play it and it's in a different, the clicks are in a different place each time and you don't see them in the waveform, it's yeah. probably playback. Right. Um, but with USB stuff, it's got, you got to be really careful. If something comes with an abnormally short USB cable, like three feet long, Scarlet Solo. Yeah, that's a little It's for a reason. Way. It's because they, if, well, one, they want to save money. I guess save five cents on a longer cable. I don't know. But two, it's because that cable was proven to be reliable with that device. And changing that cable in any way, they're not going to guarantee it's going to be reliable. In a lot of cases, we're trying to run these USB connections longer. I'm dealing with it right now. I have a client with a USB mixer, which are cool, but sometimes the computer is 10 to 15 feet away. Now we got to run USB a lot further. Um, he started having glitches because it was plugged in, I think because it was plugged into a USB hub. So I got him a USB extender that's powered. So it's got a, a USB on each end. Mm -hmm. It uses Cat six in between oh. to to run the cable. You can go 180 feet or something, apparently. And then there's a power supply that plugs into it to power the system. Even with all of that, the next day I tested it. Worked, of course, it worked beautifully. Always works great when the mechanics there, right? When you take the car in, <laughs> and then uh, it started glitching to him the next day. And I was like, did you reboot the computer? How often do you reboot your computer? And all that kind of stuff. So what is this whole rant going towards? The problem with USB is it, it's old, old technology from almost 20 years ago, maybe more, that we've now kind of, we're trying to adapt into newer, newer systems. And there are newer flavors of USB, the USB-C being the one I'm thinking of the most. And there's massive improvements in the USB systems. So if you're shopping now for audio interfaces and you're concerned about these kinds of issues, see if you can start finding USB interfaces with USB-C as the jack on the back. Um, the Rode AI-1 is one of those. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen too many people with them. I have set up one of them, but it has that USB-C jack. And with that jack comes a higher grade of cable and also more power from the computer uh, is delivered to the device. So you probably will have a lot less issues or going to a USB interface that has its own power supply. You know, some of them have a wall wart that plugs in. Right. Uh, the audience stuff does, for example. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, watch out for that. Yeah. I had a conversation with our good friend, Anthony Gettig this yeah. morning. Bought himself a road podcaster. Oh, he got the roadcaster. Oh, the roadcaster. Yeah, I got one. It has replaced things. five pieces of gear in his studio. Yeah. And he said it was the video that you did on it that it's sort of true. convinced him and he was we talked about it and he went out and bought one. All of his outdoor gear, you know, the outboard gear he outboard has. Gear. It's he doesn't need the headphone distribution amplifier anymore. 
It it has four headphone jacks. It has four headphone jacks. You can use it as a phone patch because it's got Bluetooth in it, and you or you can plug your phone into. It. it was designed for podcasting, right? But it could, as as he was saying, it could be the sleeper panel for voice actors everywhere because it eliminates so many things and puts it all in one package. Anthony is more. Anthony is more. Well, he does. He's producing as much as he is voiceover, so right. he's a little bit more definitely more techie right. than maybe many of you, but. I got to say, my Rodecaster, it gets better over time because they continuously update the firmware. Um, we just did an episode of Pro Audio Suite, this podcast I do, and we just talked about the new update to the firmware that dropped like the day of the show that we taped. And uh, it was version two. And they're like, here you go. Here's 26 brand new features because you wanted them. <laughs> 26 features. I mean, you see that in software. Right. right, that's not so uncommon. But for an, a piece of hardware, physical gear, yeah. to suddenly have twenty six new functions inside it is kind of mind boggling. They got somebody, somebody smart working for them. There's some smart engineers. This thing is like R two D two. It is whatever you want, ask it to do. Really impressive. So I, I keep waiting. I have to say, I'm the paranoid one with gear. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for something to be unreliable about it. So far, so good. We're yeah. six months in and. Every firmware update has been fine and worked, and you know it's been a great piece of gear. Yeah, I've got I got to get me one of those. Although it's I've got our, our Allen and Heath broadcast board, which does a lot of the same things. It's a good piece of gear. Yeah, it's this working thing, solid for this me. This thing is a. Uh, it's it, well, I did the same thing. I I got one, and it replaced four pieces of gear in my studio, and it's not flawless, but dang close, and it's decluttered my desk dramatically. Right. I'm really, I've been really happy with yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, you could sell all the old stuff and it pays for the, the whole new gear, which yeah. makes well, actually, sense to well, me. I'll say one new feature. I won't get into it too much, but okay. you know, on that mixer, there's a little indent button that when the mic turns on, the speakers turn off. Right. It's got a mute button. Or it mutes them on. It has a monitor mute thing. Yeah. As soon as you turn on a mic, they just added that. So now if you pot up the slider for the mic or if you unmute the mic, the monitors turn off if you have this feature turned on. Oh man! And Just like in radio, now it's a broadcast board. It's, I mean, it's I, I love it. It's I fabulous. It. Well, before we get to our next question, yeah, we need to remind our vast audience out there what you and I do if they haven't figured it out already. <laughs> right. Um, studio talking. Yeah, we'll I mean, make we'll make your studio hum or not wait, hum or not. Hum. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad slogan. Yeah. We it's make like your that studio kids, little SNL <laughs> thing for a nut bar. They're like, it's not very good. I'm like, that's a bad slogan. Uh, we will not make your studio hum. We will find the hum and we will get rid of it. That's so right. That's what we do. But that's not all we do. No. No. We take you from soup to nuts. If you, if you want to start a home studio, you got to talk to one of us. Because if you go online, and we were talking about this earlier, you're going to get all sorts of suggestions. Tech support com by committee is a bad idea. Not a good idea. It's a minefield. Talk to the guys that know how to do it because we've been doing it for probably a combined almost 30 years. That's right. Uh, nobody has that much experience at it. And uh, if you need, you want to design a studio, you want to design a voiceover palace, talk to George. He does some amazing stuff. If you want to learn the basics of how you set up a home studio and how to keep it simple where to put it in your house where to put it in your house. bring me over to your house and i will sniff around and find the right place <laughs> to put it in your house that's it over at homes voiceover studio.com that is correct and uh, i forgot to mention mine but i'm at george the tech.com or george the dot tech so come find us right and hire us please and we will that's make you happy why we're here the most important thing that's right uh what's our next question questions. voice man voice um, man this m-a-n-n -N. yeah right. this was in the chat room somewhere between the last show and this show okay uh and it must have been he was probably watching a previous episode so he had a question mm -hmm. so this may sound non sequitur i'm not sure but the question is if i put a split signal through two channel strips so he's got one mic split out and then Two channel strips, two different processors. Um, one using effects such as a high pass filter, compressor, expander, and the other one bypassing the effects, and the two signals are combined. Why? <laughs> what would be the latency between the two signals? 
All right. That's first off, <laughs> wow. why? That's esoteric. Why would you be doing that? <laughs> that is really esoteric. Um, okay. What would be Lacey? If you're using completely analog gear, yeah. theoretically, there should be no difference. in, in the, With analog signal, it travel, travels at the speed of light, goes in, comes out the other end, the same speed as it, whether it's going through, you know, ostensibly a wire this long and a wire this long. So it'll get there quick. Yeah, it's going to get there real quick. Um, there should be no noticeable audible difference. But if one of those pieces of gear or both of them are digital, whole different door story because that signal has to get sampled, encoded into digital, do the magic that you have that thing doing to the audio, and then decode it back to analog and goes and then move out on, on the other on the other side. In that case, there definitely is going to be some kind of latency introduced. Um, I would never do what you're saying. I would never take two signal chains, then recombine them and record them both. Why? If you want to record two yeah. signal chains, go for it. Put them on two separate tracks so you can do a little A-B testing or I don't know why you do it. Maybe you want to have a wet processed version and a dry version. I don't know. Those reasons maybe you would do it. But definitely do not combine the two to back together. Chances are if they're just two analog signals, it'll just be louder. But if not, phasing, it's going to it could sound really weird. It could sound terrible. It's generally not a good idea. It sounds like a geeky solution to something that doesn't need to be geeky. Yeah. Because, I mean, we usually recommend not using all of this equipment yeah. because it's not necessary. It's not the equipment that's going to get you work. It's how you interpret copy. And none of that stuff is going to change the way you perform copy. I don't right. quite get that. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it. I, again, the t context of the question, I think, came from an, old, an older show, but there you go. There's our 10 cents. Don't do that. Um, Jay Sawyer asked, does the Apollo and the Apollo Twin work well as an interface with Source Connect? I don't see why so not. The Apollo and the Apollo Twin. I don't know what the first Apollo is referring to, but Apollo is, so the company is called Universal, Universal Audio. Audio. Yeah. The product is called the Apollo, and then in the product line, there's the twin the twin solo the twin duo the naming convention is out of control but basically anything in the apollo line does work well as an audio interface with source connect um i've set it up for a bunch of different people there is one little weird thing with um source connect and what's called the virtual channels so if you do end up going this route and you want to get into more esoteric ways of setting things up with the apollo let me know I will walk you through what virtual channels are, why you use them, right. how to get them to work with Source Connect, and on and on and on. But on the simplest level, absolutely, uh, it works great with Source Connect. He didn't ask. He didn't say whether he meant Source Connect standard or Source Connect now. Right. Caveat: On Windows, anybody using an Apollo on the Windows version will have problems with Chrome. Ooh. Um, getting audio into Chrome, which is what Source Connect now, Source Connect uses. now, yeah. IPDTL, right? Uh, Bodago Call, anything that relies on Chrome, um, you can't. When you click, you know, when he says uh, it says, "Please click the allow button in your right. browser." Right. That's Permission, where, that, permissions are everything. With yes, that. on Windows, that it, that's where you that's where the buck stops. <laughs> you can't you can't get it to work. It just doesn't work. It's that mystery part that's, why won't it work? Why won't it work? Yeah. Check the permission. Oh, yeah. now yeah. it works. Yeah. But that's like a semi-new problem. It's a semi-new problem. It affects a very small number of people. People are using Windows 10 with an Apollo and Source Connect now. I, I set up Apollo presets for people all the time, and I use Source Connect now for that, to facilitate that, and then we run into that problem. So I've run into it a few times. But no. Apollo and Source Connect is a, is a good match. Yeah. Uh, last Tim, question? From Tim Kelly. Yeah. Using uh, a gate with regard to noises on recording, DBX. I think it's a statement more than a question, but he's saying that... Can you? For him, he, 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 I think what he's saying is he's using a DBX. I'm going to assume he means a 286, because that's the most common by right. far inexpensive channel strip DBX makes. And it does have an expander gate thing in it, and it generally does. It generally does work pretty well. You got to be really careful though with those front end processors. Yeah, 
Yeah. If the noise level is high in your studio and you're using it as a workaround, every time it goes up and down, it's going to become the, very apparent. It's every time he's right. and then the noise is going to yeah. drop away it's going to yeah. be really obvious yeah. going back to what we were talking about in the last segment about yeah. those strange little noises that you have in where you live yeah um uh, i'm not a big fan of of a front end noise guy. i'm not a big fan of anything front end because once you put something on the Boy. front end it's there the noise gates can really forever. get you in trouble they and, really can get you in trouble. Oh, I and you know, and I love it when you know, if even if I'm not using one, and some engineer says you're using a noise gate, I'm like, nah, I'm not using a noise gate. You're just being a, sh you know, you're being a son of a gun because <laughs> you know they don't think your studio can be that quiet. That's is right. That why? That's yeah. right. <laughs> but that's the thing is, you want to do everything you can physically again to get your audio right and make sure that there aren't any extraneous noises. It's a last resort to use a noise gate. But again, if you've got some constant noise, find out what the noise is, where it's coming from, and get rid of it. Here's what a noise gate is good for. And I'm, I'm going to wrap a, an expander into the definition of what a noise gate is. Right. If your noise floor is, let's say, minus 45, it's reasonably quiet, but mm. maybe there's a little hiss or there's a little... A noise gate or expander is good at taking that noise floor and then increasing it, or I'm sorry... Decreasing, decreasing it. it. Yeah. So like if it's at minus 48, it's really good at making, making it go down to like minus 55 or minus 58. Make, you can drop it a percentage or a certain amount right. and get pretty good results. But if you use a front end one, like in a 286, it's super dependent on the input level, how loud you are, how close you are to your mic, how much gain you're using. Unless you are super consistent on all that stuff, this thing is either going to kick in when you don't want it to and chop off bits of words, or it's just not going to work at all, and it's not going to do anything. Right. So, and that that is the problem with these. Like, I'll tell people, like, you can use this on the front end, but if you don't have your gain set right, you're going to have trouble. And then you're going to, even and if you're not monitoring while you're recording, which I know a lot of you don't use headphones while you're recording because it hin hinders your performance, you'll have no idea that your expander was chopping off little bits of your performance. Now you'll sit down to go edit and go, oh, oh no, man. I'm going to take this um, P and then edit, copy, paste it over here. I've done it. <laughs> oh, it's, a it's not easy. You got to know what you're doing. But yeah, again, don't use front-end processing. Yeah. All the front-end processors were designed for live broadcast. That's really what the, and for, for rock bands and various other live things. Casting. Live, live casting. Li yeah, live casting. Yeah. We use an expander for this show because oh. we got the air conditioning room. Yeah, we do. We're we in do Southern California. Humble. It's got to stay cool in here. But I've also spent a tremendous amount of time tweaking, tweaking this thing. Yeah. I'm tweaking it constantly. On my screen over here is my console, and I'm messing with it sometimes during the show to make sure it sounds good. But that's because that's my job as the engineer to do that. As a voice actor, to try to have to think about that, that's going to ruin your performance. You, can't, you cannot be thinking about that while you're acting. Absolutely. It's not going to happen. All righty. Anyway, Tim did say it's the 286S DB. Oh, well, that is, that is the most common one. It's pretty cool. I mean, for podcasting, webcasting, live casting, great thing. Not for voiceover. Don't, I would be really careful about using it for voiceover. Yeah. Yeah. Po podcasting is a whole different thing. Yeah. Maybe we need to do a podcast on podcast. We could. We could, we could do a whole special like, about podcasting. Like everybody else in podcasting <laughs> exactly. anyway well that's going to do it I for us right it, now yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break and we'll wrap things up right after this don't go away hey guys this is tom also known as the voice of spongebob squarepants and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with dan and george Snail. and the audio body shop Meow. snails like it too Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, 
performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and I'm very excited, very happy to announce that as of today, vo 2 gos sponsorship with uh, VoiceOver Body Shop is over. Long-standing relationship, bye-bye, vo 2 go go And the reason I'm happy and excited about it is that we're about to embark on a brand new sponsorship arrangement with VoiceOver Body Shop with the new name of our website and our company. The name is now voheroes.com. And there's a big reason for that. I think that VoiceOver Body Shop and our company share a mission. And that mission is not just to teach you how to do voiceover really well, but to really help you become heroes to your clients. Your clients don't come to you just to do voiceover. Your clients come to you to help them, to save them, to help them sell products and services, to help them explain their company, to help them narrate their audiobook. There's a million reasons why they come to you, and it's all about making their lives spectacular. And that's what we're going to do at voheroes.com. The new website is up. I'd love to show it to you. voheroes.com front page is basically a very modern, clean look that tells you everything you need to succeed. It helps you meet our coaches, uh, what we do in three simple steps. We let you figure out if VO Heroes is right for you. We think it usually is if you're watching this show. Um, we have the same classes, but they've been heroically updated for voheroes.com. And again, the look and feel is fantastic. And the big thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to get off Facebook because people have been telling us we don't want to be on Facebook. So now ProConnect, which is our discussion group, is on voheroes.com. When you want to talk about things with your uh, your your fellow pros in the VO Heroes curriculum, uh, you'll be able to do it right on the site. Log in, get all of the stuff that you want, the workouts, the classes, the discussion, uh, the labs, the recordings, everything right there on one site, clean, awesome, lovely, and I'm very excited about our future. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be launching officially with a great package, great price, lots of great bonuses, Stand by for that. You'll hear about it on VoiceOver Body Shop. In the meantime, stand by for more VOBS. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, from VOHeroes.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well, another rousing discussion on the world of voiceover technology. I feel worn out. Like I've been talking a lot tonight. We have been. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a lot to discuss. It's amazing. It you know, like a friend of mine who became a podiatrist. Mm -hmm. you know, back, I remember he was going to podiatry school when we graduated from high school. He said, you're going to be a podiatrist? What? He says, you wouldn't believe how many things can go wrong with people's feet. I thought you were going to say, you wouldn't believe how many people have feet. <laughs> well, that was part of it as well. <laughs> High percentage, you know, it's like. And guess what? Yeah. Everybody's got two. At so least most people. Many most people. Do. Oh, that's true. You know. And Sorry, one-footed people. Yeah. yeah. Or no-footed people. <laughs> okay. Um, anyhow, not to make fun of people. I think people I'm, I think I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, that might, that might be it. Anyway. Um, 
let's see. We've got to talk, talk about who our uh, our donors, donors of the week, week are. We had donors donations from Don Griffith. Thank you, Don. Yes, I Khan, Martha Khan, uh, Shauna Pennington Baird, Diana Birdsall, and we also had one from Dwayne, Dwayne DeSalvo, DeSalvo, who also it's his booth. showed us his booth. Yeah, let's twist a little bit. This is, There's there his booth. Oh, there yeah. it is. Ba, ba, ba. So if you want to do that too, please send it in to the guys at VOBS.TV. Send a landscape photo of your not, studio. Not portrait. As you can see, it doesn't have to be some you know showcase, just a real work a day voiceover booth which is exactly what that is sound your, blankets computer microphone and your voiceover shrine there you go so that's we love to have those for the backdrop yeah right and if you want to send yours in send it into the yeah. guys at vobs.tv right all righty so uh, if you're looking for tech support dan and i do that as you guys know i'm available over at george the tech.com or george the dot tech as it says on the screen because I like those nerdy short domain names. Dan likes longer, more descriptive domain names. It's it's right to the point. Homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah. Yes. Check me out there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we do this show every other week. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably you may be watching this on a recording, mm -hmm. but you're getting, you're getting the really good version. Uh, so <laughs> if you'd like to be here live every uh, on a Monday night, T tell us, hey, we're, I'm going to be in the greater Los Angeles area, uh, which keeps getting greater and greater. And uh, tell us that you're get, you can be here and uh, you'd like to be in the audience and we'll give you the secret handshake and let you in. We'd like to see more people here because it's more fun doing the show with people. It is fun. It you is know. fun. Uh, also, um, what's left? We need to thank, thank our sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. Like? Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. He makes great demos. He really Indeed. does. Uh, let's see. Need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting and recorded webcasting. Um, Sue Merlino over here, our amazing technical director. The TD. She was she on it tonight. Does a great job. Skeleton crew tonight. We handled it with just just the three of us. I was doing chat room duty tonight. Uh, that helps. All right. <laughs> and Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Hey Lee. All right. Well, we know this is not an easy business. It, it is a business, by the way. But it your is. audio's got to be good because we know if it sounds right, it is right. If it sounds good, it's even better. We <laughs> got to copyright that one. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All right. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Another amazing guest.